Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture on mathematics. In this lecture, we are going to discuss numerical methods. And in numerical methods, especially we are going to discuss about bisection method. Uh, as you know, in my previous videos, I have discussed about the in numerical integration and I have discussed trapezoidal rule, Simpson's three by eight rule, and Simpson's one third rule. And this all the three rules give the area and a value of integration, which is approximate value. We know that if we are directly solve that integral, then it is not possible uh, corresponding to our given data. The, then we are finding the integration, but it is an approximate method. The same way, the numerical methods uh, here, bisection, then Newton's Raphson, Regula Falsi, these all are used to find the root of polynomial or algebraic or transcendental equation. But these are the approximate methods. They are giving the root approximately. That means they are uh, nearest to the root, but not exactly that root. Why? Because uh, suppose I will take one example. Here, the equation is x square minus 5x plus 6 equals to 0. This is our equation 1. And it is a polynomial equation in x of degree 2. That means this equation 1 having two roots. And uh, it, 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 by using our regular formula of finding roots, we can find the roots of this equation. And if you find the roots of this equation, we get x equals to 2, x equals to 5. That means we get exact value of this root. And for this equation, it is easy to find also. Here, I will take another example, x minus cos x equals to 0. In this example, cos x is a trigonometric function. And if we write in the form of series, then it contains the infinity, infinite power of x. That means uh, first term contains 1, then x squared, then x cube, uh, x squared, x raised to the power 4, and so on up to infinity. So this equation has infinite number of roots. But if we are solving this equation, then it is not possible to find exact at least a single root. Just like as this equation, it contains only two roots, that is x equals to 2 and x equals to 5. And we can find the value of uh, corresponding value, which, which are the roots of this equation. But here, it is not possible. That means this type of equation is called a transcendental equation. And here, we are finding the approximate value of root. And that is nothing but approximate root, and which we are getting by using bisection method, regular policy method, newton raphson and uh, other methods. So, especially in this lecture, we are going to discuss bisection method. Uh, first of all, I will explain the basic concept of finding roots. Here, suppose this equation I will write in the form of function. That is, suppose I will take f of x is equal to square minus 5x plus 6. That means this equation I will write in the form of function. And we know that if we put the value of x, in this function, then we get corresponding value of this function f of x. And suppose this function f of x, we write y is equal to. That means corresponding to the value of x, we get corresponding value of y. Now, here it is just like a curve. And if we draw this uh, curve corresponding to this function y is equal to this given curve, if we draw the curve the in xy plane, here, we are taking the xy plane and we don't know but uh, suppose randomly if we are draw the curve and we get this type of curve then what is the meaning of this curve corresponding to this root see here in this equation we know the roots of these functions are here this is our function and here it is the equation and we know these are the roots what is the meaning of this root? If we put x equals to 0, uh, x equals to 2 in equation number 2, then we get f of x equals to 0 at x equals to 2. That means if we put x equals to 2 in equation number 2, then value of our function corresponding to x equals to 2 is 0. Similarly, if we put x equals to 3, in equation number 2, then we get f of 3 is equals to, again, 0. 
Why? Yes, because these are the root of our function and it is representing the uh, value of function that is nothing but value of one. So if the uh, x is a root corresponding value of x is a root of our equation, then corresponding that root value of y is zero. That means if we draw the curve and that in this curve here, this value x equals to a and corresponding to x equals to a, the value of y is zero. That means if curve intersect to x axis on that point, or that point is represent the root of our function. Okay, is it clear? Here we have given equation and we are writing that equation is f of x equals to and if we draw the curve corresponding to the y equals to that curve, then if the curve is intersecting to x axis, then the intersecting point is nothing but root of our equation. Now, next we discuss the bisection method. Uh, the same process we are using in the bisection method. Uh, here, especially, suppose here, uh, if we observe this diagram, then if we go right side of point x equals to a, then suppose here, uh, x equals to suppose it is a point c then corresponding the value of function is here when x equals to c then y is equals to f of c here y is equals to f of c and it is above the x-axis and suppose we are going left hand side of x equals to a then here suppose one another point that is x equals to b and the corresponding value of function is f of b. And here the value of function is negative. That means if the root is lies between any two points, then the function at that point is uh, one side we get function negative and another on another point function is positive. Then the root must be lie on that point. Not necessary, it is a term. If we, uh, we get the graph in this way, then it is again cut to the x-axis. This is the root of our function, but it is not necessary if the both, if uh, we go both the side, left and right, we get the function is positive. Uh, then uh, they may lie the root in that interval or may not be, because the, if we are saying the, on both the point function is positive, then maybe the graph is only above the x-axis. On both the point function is negative, then it is the graph is below the x-axis. That means if function content both the signs are similar, then root may be lies between that two points or may not be. But if the function on the points is uh, uh, having opposite signs, for example, here we have get the two points B and C. And corresponding to B, function is negative, and corresponding to C, function is positive. That means we are getting the two points, and function on both the points is having opposite sign. If we get this type of condition, then we are strictly says that there must be exist a root between these two points. That means corresponding to our function, there must be exist a root in, which is lies between this, uh, which is lies between this interval. That is x equals to a that is a is belongs to this interval using this basic concept we are uh, discussed the bisection method in the uh, bisection method we are finding the roots of the transcendental equation or algebraic equation again i will explain through the diagram the process of bisection is suppose uh, we have given curve, that is suppose we have given equation f of x equals to 0. And we want to find the roots of this equation. Here we have given equation f of x equals to 0 in the form of any, uh, either this equation is a transcendental equation or algebraic equation. Now we take y is equals to 
f of x that is the function here y equals to f of x representing the curve and we draw the diagram corresponding to this curve so suppose we get this type of curve now next our task is we have to find the value of y corresponding to the values of x now here we don't given we don't have the values of x so we have to put randomly the values of x in case if i put the value of x equals to a suppose we take any point x equals to a and put this value of x equals to a in our function then we get the corresponding value of y and that is nothing but f of y and here we take f of y is less than 0. We put x equals to a in our given function, then we get corresponding value of function which is less than 0. That means we get y is negative. And diagrammatically, it is shown below the x axis. Now, similar way, we take the another point, suppose x equals to b. x equals to b on x axis and draw the uh, find the value of function corresponding to this point and in case if we get it is positive f of b is greater than zero that means it is y value of y is positive and therefore it is lies above the x axis and suppose this is a point b comma f of b Now, here function is positive at B and function is negative at A. So, we get the opposite sign function. That means there is a root lies between the open interval A and B. So, uh, from this, we, it is clear that if we join this point, then curve must be intersect to the x axis. And if the curve is intersect x axis, that means there must be exist a root. We don't know uh, direct this point about this point, but we are uh, claim that there must be exist a root between open interval A and B. So assume that uh, there is a point, suppose there is a root lies between A and B. Now, by in the bisection method, we are finding the middle point of this interval. And we know that if we want to find the middle point of A and B, then we have to take their average. So we are taking the first iteration that is called x1 is equals to a plus b by 2. What is the meaning of a plus b by 2? That means uh, here we are finding the average of a and b. Why? Because we know that the root is lies between a and b. If we know that the root is belonging to open interval a b so we are finding the uh, point which is lies between open interval a b and we are directly finding the middle point so that's why we are taking x equal equals to a plus b by 2. now uh, in this point new point x1 corresponding to this x1 we want to find the value of our function that is f of x1 in case this value is greater than zero then what is the meaning of this value greater than zero function is positive that means a value function is positive that represent here as per the diagram it is above the x-axis maybe it is in the uh, maybe here the right side of root that's why we are taking this is the middle point though so x equals to x1 is here and corresponding value of function is f of x1 which is positive now if you observe this function is positive on x1 and function is negative on a so let us we get positive value at x1 and negative value at x equals to a now the root is lies between this interval a and x1 we know that our root is exactly here we first of all taken the interval a to b and now we are reducing the length of the interval now currently we get positive value at x1 and negative value at x equals to a that means our root is lies between x1 open interval a to x1 
Now, if we know that the root is lies between a and x1, so again we have to take their average. And if we are taking the average, then we get second iteration. We call it is a second iteration. And suppose it is x2 is our second iteration. This x2 we get by the average of a and x1. So here a plus x1 divided by 2 is nothing but second iteration which is denoted by x2 and find the value of corresponding to this x2 point uh, suppose the value of function is negative so negative that means it is a left hand side of our root so, so the current negative point of function is x2 and currently the positive value of function given at x1 that means root is lies between positive and negative values so the root is lies between open interval x2 comma x1 now again we have to take average and do the same repeated this process continuously then after the certain point we reach to the exact corresponding to the root not exactly but nearest to the root hope it will be clear to all of you if now we are move on to the example here is the first example. Find the positive root of x cube minus x equals to 1. Correct up to 4 decimal places. Because we are finding the approximation. So approximation maybe we are correcting up to 3 decimal, 4 decimal. So here in the question that they are given. We have to find the approximation correct up to 4 decimal places using bisection method. Now our first task is we have to write a function f. From this given equation, we want to find the roots of this equation. So from this equation, we write the function. Let f of x equals to x cube minus x minus 1. Now, next task is we have to find the interval. That means uh, whether our root is lies. That means we have to find the two values of x on one value function is negative and another value function is positive why we are finding this, uh, this type of two values because we corresponding to two values of x function having opposite sign then our root must be lies between that two value so we get the existence of the root that's why we are taking here the random values of x Suppose we first take x equals to 0. Corresponding to x equals to 0, value of our function is minus 1. That is negative, less than 0. Now we have to put another value of x. Suppose we take x equals to 1. So f of 1 is equals to, if we put x equals to 1, then here we get minus 1 again it is less than 0 we want opposite sign function now we take x equals to 2 if we put x equals to 2 then here we get 8 minus 2 minus 1 that is 5 which is greater than 0 here both the function at x equals to 1 here at x equals to 1, function is negative. At x equals to 2, function is positive. That means it is uh, they having opposite sign. And if we get opposite sign at this corresponding values, then we can say our root, suppose we take x equals to alpha is the root, is belonging to open interval 1, 2. At 0, function is negative. And at 2, function is positive. Then we may say that the root is lies between 0 and 2. But we want to reduce the length of interval. So as compared to 0, 1 and 2 having less distance. You may take any middle point in open interval 1, 2 and other, again test the same condition. If we get the negative, then we have to consider the latest point or nearest uh, we get the, the minimum length interval. Then we have to take that interval. Now. Uh, here we get the two points 1 and 2. Now we consider this is our starting points that is a equals to 1 and b equals to 2. These are our point and root is lies between these two points. Then we have to find the approximate root. 
so for approximate root we take the first iteration and we know that in the bisection method the first iteration is nothing but average between these two points because we know that our root is lies between 1 and 2 so 1 and 2 so we take the average between 1 and 2 is nothing but 1.5 and corresponding to this value we are finding the value of our function and value of our function is 0 0.875 you can calculate and check whether it is correct or not our function we have already defined that function is f of x equals to x cube minus x minus 1 if we put here x equals to 1.5 then we get value of function is 0 0.875 that means positive value recently we get negative value at point 1 and positive value at point 1.5 now here the root is lies between 1 and 1.5 see here firstly we taken two value 1 and 2 and we conclude that root is lies between 1 and 2 now let us see we get point 1.5 which is again positive so now our root is lies between 1 and 1.5 we have taken first interval this one and then this one so step by step we are reducing the length of interval and going nearest to the root now next is again we have to find the average between these two points that nothing but the second iteration x2 so x2 is equals to 1.5 plus 1 divided by 2 is equals to 1.25 and corresponding value of a function is minus 0 0.29688 that is nothing but negative now let us see negative value is uh, getting at, at point 1.25 and positive value is at point 1.5 that means now the root is lies between 1.5 and 1.25 here is the root if we know that the root is lies between 1.25 and 1.5 then again we have to find their middle point that, that means we have to take the average of this point so we get the third iteration this one and fi find the value of process find the value of function hope you will get the idea of bisection method this process we have to continue and when you have to stop i will tell you here I am taking the uh, next iteration, next iteration up to the iteration 12 and 13. Here, if we observe this iteration number 12 and iteration number 13, they are approximately equal up to the four decimal places because up to the point 3, 2, 4, 5, if the digit is greater than 5, up to the 5, then it is converted into 6 that means here these are approximately equal if you don't think that this uh, is not a, uh, correct then you may find the again iteration we get the similarity uh, between the point that means after the 13 uh, iteration if we find the 14 iteration we get the value 1.3246 uh, the values are repeated once we get the repeated value then we have to stop the process and conclude that this is nothing but root of our function and here if the, uh, the point is nothing but the root of our function then corresponding value of function is zero but here it is not zero it is approximately zero that means this is a not exact root but it is a but it is a approximate root of our function so from this we can conclude that x12 and x13 are approximately same up to four decimal places so the approximate root of our function is x equals to 1.3246. You try this example by yourself. अगर अभी तक के आपने मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया होगा, तो रेड बटन है यहाँ पे वीडियो के नीचे सब्सक्राइब का उसके ऊपर क्लिक करो और साइड में आपको मैथमेटिक्स दिखेगा, जो आइकॉन है फोटो, उसके ऊपर क्लिक करो ताकि आप मेरी जो प्लेलिस्ट है जिसके अंदर अभी तक के सभी वीडियोस जितने भी मैंने डाले वो सभी आपको यूनिट वाइज लेक्चर्स वहां पे मिलेंगे और क्लास वाइज भी उसमें लेक्चर्स अवेलेबल हैं तो जिस पर्टिकुलर क्लास का या फिर यूनिट का वीडियो आपको चाहिए उस फोल्डर पे जाके आप पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर्स को देख सकते हैं
उसी तरह से वीडियो के नीचे आपको जिस वीडियो को आप प्ले करते हो उस वीडियो के नीचे ही आपको लाइक का बटन दिखेगा उसको भी प्रेस करना है और साइड में शेयर लिखा हुआ है उस शेयर पे क्लिक करोगे तो यू कैन शेयर माई वीडियो विथ योर फ्रेंड्स थ्रू व्हाट्सअप फेसबुक एंड अदर ऑप्शन आर अवेलेबल एंड इट्स कम्प्लीटली फ्री थैंक यू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब